Show me the money. All right, show me the money. NFL picks for week number seven on the line today. Joining me, somebody who's been on the podcast a couple times before. He's a host of Sports Grid. Great Kevin Walsh here. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing good, Mike. Uh, glad to be back on. I think the last time you and I spoke, the uh, NBA was trying to piece together the bubble uh, and make all that happen uh, alongside Martino. So uh, it's been a while, and I'm happy to be back on. Hey, they did get it done, and the Lakers won. <laughs> That's right. They. Uh, I mean, listen, I, I almost feel like we, uh, as a sports community, didn't give the NBA enough credit for just how effective the bubble was. I mean, literally, you know, zero positive deaths. And uh, the Lakers, who I thought were the best team before the season started, during the season, when the season restarted, that they got the job done. LeBron's back to being the unanimous best player in the world. He has 17. Yeah, for sure. We're going to talk some NFL today. And obviously, you're in, deep in with the gambling. So we have six weeks mm-hmm. of data now to sort of look at. So what are some trends you've noticed so far that have caught your eye in terms of the betting? Well, I'll tell you what's really now um, starting to become a part of the, the calculus now is the bye weeks, right? Yeah. Uh, because that's that's where we're starting to see more and more of that. We had our first kind of sample of buys uh, when we had, the, you know, the Steelers and the Titans off of their surprise buy. And both of those teams have big scoring outputs. Both of them covered their numbers. Then we had the Lions and the Packers last week coming off of buys. And we saw for the Lions, they look great. For the Packers, not so much. And I think the one reminder it offered is buys are great, but if a team doesn't need it, right, if those early, early buys, teams playing playing some great football, you can kind of slow them up. And that's what I think happened there with Green Bay. So buys are important. We've seen it help most more often than it hurts, but don't automatically assume it's this massive edge for a team. Yeah, I think also for me, the thing I noticed too is when in doubt, bet the over because the scoring just seems to be at an all-time high this year. <laughs> yeah, finally last week, it, it did go the other way. 10-4, uh, and four, I think the week finished up to the under. Is that a matter of matchups? Is that a matter of inflated totals? Uh, it's tough to say. I, I think, you know, I personally looked at the board last week. It, it felt like an under week. So uh, I tend to agree, when in doubt, go over, but you know, as we start to learn more and more about these teams, we'll start to learn who we can and who we can't trust. Yeah, one team we're still not sure we can trust yet is your team, the Philadelphia Eagles, and they had yeah. an interesting week last week. They have a couple of big guys get hurt, but they had the big charge against the Ravens, losing the end. What was your big takeaway from that game? Yeah, I think ultimately the Eagles put forward performance at the end that still gives me enough confidence to say they're the best team in this division. And that's a game that they were down 17 nothing in and looked completely out of up against the team that had the best record in football last year. The team that's only blemish is losing to the Kansas City Chiefs in a primetime game. So I don't think that's any small feat. Um, can this team get any kind of help is really the question. I, I truly, my, it is impossible for this team to be as injured as they are. I mean, they were the most injured team in football last year. Injuries are supposed to regress back to the middle. And then they lost Brandon Brooks before the season ever started. We're getting into the year. They've got Jason Peters, who now has to come back and play left tackle. He's hurt. Lane Johnson's never healthy. And I'm like, all right, well, eventually this will get better. And then by the time the Ravens game ends, they lose Zachary and Miles Sanders. So I guess the one thing I have to be cautious on is assuming at any point in this year they are going to get healthier because apparently it's just not in the cards. Yeah, but the good thing is, though, they are in the worst division in football, the NFC East, and I would still make them the favorite considering how awful Dallas looked with Andy Dalton in his first game under center on Monday. Uh, okay, here's the simplest way I can put this for people who are still buying Dallas. And ultimately, you probably could buy any team in this division and make uh, a case. So let me say, for those people that believe, oh, the Cowboys will win this by default, what you are saying is the team with the worst defense in football and the backup quarterback is going to win a division by default. 
that is a ridiculous idea. They are going to have to go out there and really figure some things out. They're not winning anything by default. They just got embarrassed at home again, this time by the Arizona Cardinals. Consolation point for Andy Dalton and the offense that he was trying to lead. Zeke is a mess. That wasn't even the first game where he's had fumble issues and his confidence is getting banged up by the game as people are now losing their minds over contract that's far from even seeing its worst days. And you've also got Dallas playing Washington this week and the game's a pick em. If that doesn't speak to where the Cowboys are, I agree, Mike. I just, and this is not some, you know, pro Eagles fan thing. I just think the idea that any opponent could put a minus number next to the Cowboys in the NFC division futures market is preposterous. Yeah, especially considering the fact that they have somehow been worse than the Jets' defense, and the Jets' defense is awful from firsthand experience. I think that says something. <laughs> Uh, and this is the thing, you know, last year, so Dallas last season had a pretty poor defense. They had the number two offense by DVOA in football. And sometimes these things can regress. So the point that I had made to people is if that offense takes even a step back, you have to be really worried about the state of the defense because they lost key players, right? Most notably, Byron Jones going to Miami. Well, the defense has completely fallen off a cliff. Does anybody remember when Demarcus Lawrence was one of the most talked about pass rushers in football? When was the last time anyone said a positive thing about Tank Lawrence? I don't remember it. And the offense, despite taking C.D. Lamb in the first round, who, by the way, is a heck of a talent, is not going to help overcome all of these other areas in which this football team is lacking. So this defense being this bad is for real. And this offense having to play from behind is a complete nightmare because now it's Andy Dalton who's going to have to try and create miracle comebacks. We saw Monday night. That's not the recipe. No, it isn't. And the Eagles do have the best quarterback in the division right now at Carson Wentz. I know I was concerned about him earlier in the year, but to me, I look at it as like, hey, look who he's supporting cast right now. Look who he's throwing the football <laughs> to. We haven't heard of Travis Fulgham before like three weeks ago, and now he's definitely the number one receiver on the team. So I think he's going to be fine. I mean, listen, you know, Mike, I'm glad you said it because the one thing is with this Philly team, look, I'm not trying to tell people that, oh, this team's going to win a Super Bowl. I'm not, I'm not trying to say any of that. But the one thing that I've got no tolerance for is the slander of Carson Wentz. I've never seen anything like this, man, where you acknowledge the injuries on this team. They go, oh, the excuses. The excuses. They had all five offensive linemen that were supposed to be available for them. Hurt. Four out. Jason Kelsey just not healthy in that game against Baltimore. And then think about the skill players. Deshaun Jackson, Alshon Jeffrey, Dallas Goddard. Don't forget, Marquise Goodwin was signed to be a big player for this football team. Jalen Rieger, their first-round pick out. And then they say goodbye to Zach Ertz and Miles Sanders in the game. That is literally, this is not some hyperbole, that is the seven top skill players that this team was supposed to throw out there. And he's making a comeback with Travis Fulham, Boston Scott, and Greg Ward Jr. And people are still crying. Oh, he throws picks. What in the world do you want him to do, man? What Ben Peterson ran out of two-point conversion. That's why they ended up not being able to tie that game because they find themselves in such insane positions that he's running read options with Wentz. I get it. You don't think this guy is a top 10 quarterback in football, fine, so be it. But the notion that this guy is not doing everything he can with by far the worst supporting cast in football is outrageous. Yeah, that's definitely true. And this week they got a short week. They're coming in, they're playing the Giants on Thursday. I talk about the top of the podcast. The Giants did not look very good. Yes, they can still win the division, but this is a team the Eagles have beaten seven straight times going back to 2016. So I would think that yeah. this is a bounce back spot for the Eagles. I agree. I, so this division is really starting to mess with people's heads. And people are, I don't know what it is, but nobody wants to go Philly. Like, like nobody that I talk to, at least Mike, you sound like you do. That's nice to hear because maybe I thought I was insane. But people either would go the default, Dallas is going to win this division. They've got too much talent. Or they'd start trying to fall in love with Washington or fall in love with the Giants. 
And now the Giants are the new flavor of the month. If they convert, convert that two point conversion, they're 0 and 6 right on the same level as the New York Jets. I mean, they were a two point conversion. They were an extra point kick and a coin toss going Washington's direction from losing at home to what is a dreadful football team. Daniel Jones has thrown one touchdown pass since week one. And I'm listening now, listen, man, Giants are the value of the division. Are they? I don't know. I mean, if you have like spare cash lying around your couch, you can say, okay, I'll go but go like plus 850 on the Giants and hope you get lucky, but I'm, I wouldn't expect the cash on it. No, I mean, it, it's just like, that's the thing. I'm not, it, it, I don't know how beating Washington at home by a point was this impressive for people to get their first win of the year. Again, I know it says a lot about the division, but if you think that, and, and this is just a betting tip for people, even if you disagree with me, that's fine. If you think the Giants can win this division, you take whatever your normal unit size is, you need to split it up. 70-30. 30 on that plus 850, you need to put 70 on it for them to beat the Eagles on Thursday night football. If they don't beat the Eagles on Thursday night football, the most banged up they'll be all season long, I think, then they're not winning this division. This is a spot that the Giants have to come away with a win. They're plus money to win the game, around plus 175, give or take. You need to be making that bet if you actually believe this team can go out there and challenge for the NFC. Good advice there. Speaking of the pick, we'll go to that this week. My good friend Phil Lombardo, who's also a Giant fan, was here last week. He went 1-2 and two on the week. He laid the 3.5 with the Steelers. He got that one correct because they blew the Browns out. He laid the 8 with the Colts. That did not go too well because the Colts ended up falling <laughs> way behind early. came all the way back. And he bet, right. he bet on the Cowboys getting the two and a half at home. We saw how that went. <laughs> no, no, that did not. <laughs> that didn't work well. I guess if anything for your buddy, he got the best of the number. I mean, they closed his one point favorites, which you know a lot of people you talk to in this uh, this gambling world, they'll tell you it's all about beating numbers. There's value in beating numbers, but there's no winner next to that win. Yeah, I had a, I also had my first losing week of the year. I went one and two last week. I, I took the, I laid the pa- points of the Packers at two and a half. That turned very ugly very quickly. I bet against the Lions. I took the Jags getting the three and a half points at home. That also didn't go well. But yeah. I did get something right. I def- I laid the eight at the Dolphins against the Jets. It seems to be the lock of the week every week. So I got that one right. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if Bill's Jets is on your card for this week. It, it's not on mine. But we're getting to unimaginable territories with this Jets football team. And I don't think the book is very happy about it because the Jets this week are hosting the Bills, okay? And they are like going to end up laying the Bills about 10 more points than they laid week one in Buffalo. And the game that follows is the Jets going to, to Kansas City. Excuse me. I mean, the Jets next week, Mike, might be catching 24 and a half points as if this is a steamroll college football team coming up against like an Oklahoma team that's actually good. I, I mean, it is unbelievable, the state of the New York Jets. Oh, no kidding. And the thing is, I would probably lay those points to the Chiefs because I don't trust the Jets at all. It's like their first hand experience watching this team. Well, they can't, they can't do anything. They no. can't do anything. I no. mean, I, I tell you what, you know, we, you and I had a, a very, very brief exchange on uh, Twitter about a second half over. And ultimately, it was, it was a lesson learned for me. Now, I will say this. It, it was, I was having a bad Sunday, and I made a tilt bet. For me to bet a second half over, I had on air Mike said the Jets were going to get shut out. So it, it showed that my kind of, I was a little bit off the beaten path when I was making some of those moves. But what I did learn is the Dolphins are like, ah, we're good here. You guys are clowns. I mean, they punted two or three times inside Jets territory plus a fourth and two on the seven, took the field goal. They just didn't care. They looked at that team like absolute clowns. They pitied them, and they were just like, ah, whatever, we'll get to it in for a couple of throws because you clowns can do nothing. When Joe Flacco is taking 28-yard sacks, you can't argue with it. No, you can't. And it's also a motivation factor. Like, Brian Flores doesn't hate the Jets. This is Bill Belichick. It'll be 56 nothing. <laughs> true. That's true. I mean, I don't even – but this is what I'm saying, like, what do you even do in these spots here, right? Because 
is Cam Newton going to really be running into the fourth quarter? Like Cam Newton might be on the bench, you know, getting his post game outfit ready when <laughs> the fourth quarter comes around. Like it's they are such an embarrassment that I, the likes of which I almost feel like we've we've not really seen before. Yeah, they definitely are. Let's get to the picks right now. We're going to go on the year to do a quick reset. On the year, Teen Challenge is 12-6, and six, so good start for them. I'm actually right hot, Kevin. I'm 14-4 and four to start the year. That's fantastic, man. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's a lot of winners. That's a lot of winners. Let's see if we can keep it going here. We're going to go to this week's picks. Kevin, you are up first. Where are you going with your first pick? Yeah, so I, I tell you what, my first one uh, is a spot where last uh, time these teams played, I got beat by the back door. I laid the number with the Browns on Thursday night football against the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, and unfortunately, Joe Burrow would not leave me alone. Uh, he owes me some money. I'm coming back to the Browns in this spot, laying three on the road. I think that Cleveland will run the football big game for Kareem Hunt and cover this number. Yeah, I remember I had this the first time. I, had, I took the Bengals. I got the backdoor cover. This time I'm with you on the Browns. I do think that this is a spot where, you know what, they're going to come off that game. They're going to be really angry. It's going to be a spot where they say, you know what, let's just take out our frustration of the Bengals. Joe Burrow gets sacked about nine times, and the Browns win by about a touchdown. Yeah, no, that's, that's exactly what I'm thinking here. Joe Burrow turned it over a little bit more. And uh, the Browns might be a team that gets fat on bad teams. And you know what, there's value in that betting market. Absolutely. Let's go to your next pick. Where are you going? So my next one is probably my favorite one of the week. Uh, it's the Patriots laying two and a half points at home to the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I understand the Niners. They finally get right. Uh, they got a nice win over the Rams on Sunday night football. The Patriots are coming off a week. Look, cost me money. Had them in a tease. I can't believe they lost the football game where they didn't give up a touchdown to the Denver Broncos. But the, the opportunity to buy low on New England and sell high on a Niners team that nobody in their right mind wanted to touch. I, I mean, this couldn't be a perfect spot. I'm not sure how much longer we'll be able to lay under a field goal, but uh, while it's out there, get it. I love the Pats playing two and a half. Yeah, that's a good spot to get the Pats there. I mean, I thought about the Niners a bit this week. I said, you know what, like, I could see this going the other way where Jimmy G goes out and has a bad week against the Belichick defense. So I, I like going the wing on that one. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I just, it's so funny, but last week we saw the Niners packing three points at home to the Rams, and now all of a sudden, they go to the road or to New England, and the number is the same. If something is off there, we're going to take advantage of it. Absolutely. Where are you going with pick number three? So the final pick, the aforementioned Rams uh, are going to make the cards laying five and a half in Chicago Bears Monday night football in L.A. Uh, this being in L.A. matters to me. Sean McVay being off a loss matters to me. And Nick Foles, as much as uh, he is close to my heart, Super Bowl MVP, Nick Foles, that team – uh, at five and one is a little bit inflated. That team easily could be two and three. I mean, if not worse. So I- I'm going to come back around uh, here, and I'm going to I'm going to roll with the Rams. I'm going to lay the points. I-, I think they might be able to get up uh, actually pretty sizably in this game and force Foles into some turnovers and pull away. Yeah, this is one I feel like I would play the other way with the Bears because they have a tendency to play close games all year. It's like. Five of their six games, all their games have been within a possession with six of them being six points or less. Mm-hmm. So that's why I would tend to go with the Bears there, but I don't I have enough confidence to touch it. That's why I stay away from it on my end. Yeah, listen, I hear you. You got to think about, though, some of those one score games, right? They lose by eight to the Colts. That was a backdoor eight that covered teasers. They were losing that game 19 to three. The Falcons game, that was when Dan Quinn was handing out wins that they shouldn't have been. Against the Lions, they were down in that football game, I think 27 to 6, something in that range. And then ultimately, three touchdown miss in the fourth quarter, comes back and saves the day. They were down massive to the Tampa Bay Bucs. I mean, this is all, you know, these are all games that they ended up kind of coming back and making these miracle runs in. The way the Rams like to close games out, just running the football and playing smart, I trust them to handle the lead. Fair enough. I'm up now. Pick number one. I'm going to do something I've done the last four weeks. I've gotten correct. That's bet against the Jets. I'm playing the, all 13 and a half of those points <laughs> with the Buffalo Bills because this is a team that on average loses by about 17 and a half points per game. The Jets have now scored by 110 points on the year. 
The Bills are coming off two straight losses. The game, they beat them by 10 the first time. That game should not have been that close. The Bill, the Jets got a garbage time touchdown to make it close, get a 10 point contest. And not, what have you seen out of the Jets in the last like five weeks is they can say, you know what, they can cover this number. Even at home, they have no fans backing them up, which is good because they were probably booing them out of the building if that was the case. So give me the points of the Bills. Lay the 13 and a half. The Jets are 0 6 against the Spreads. We 0 7 today. Yeah, no, look, and the thing is, you're probably getting the best of that number. I got to think by Sunday, it's 14 and a half, it's 15 and a half. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing starts to snug up near 17. Yeah, I think you got to grab it while it's under two touchdowns of the Bills. That's pick number one for me. Pick number two, as the team, the number, I like them a lot, and they're not laying a lot for a spot they've had a good success. I'm taking the Seahawks laying three and a half in Arizona, pick two. They have won. They're 6 0 oh, 1 the last seven trips to Arizona. I don't buy the Cardinals as being a contender either because they did not look, did not look good the last five weeks. I mean, the Dallas game, Dallas has the worst defense in football, as we talked about earlier in the podcast. They had issues with the Jets, and the Jets are just so inept they let them have the game. They've lost a couple of good games. In Seattle, Russell Wilson's cooking. They got everything going here. I only need to win by four with the Seahawks. I think they're going to do that easily. Give me the Seahawks laying those points, pick two. Seattle is a team that I am so trying to see how good they are. They're good, don't get me wrong, but a tier of their own in the NFC, I'm not positive, and I'll also just caution uh, the way we talked about the Packers. Did they really need a bye week? Turns out, no. Did Seattle need a bye week? Uh, I'm not sure. Division matchup, I might go the other way, but look, it's hard to bet against Russell Wilson these days. Yeah, it is hard to do that. That's why he's my second pick of the week. The third pick of the week, I'm going with the dog here. I'm taking the Panthers, getting seven and a half on the road into Orleans against the Saints. And to me, this is an indictment of the New Orleans defense. I don't, it's even, unreal reportedly, has been pretty bad this year. We saw on Monday night, week five, against, against the Chargers. Look, the Chargers getting the same spread. The Chargers backdoor covered me because they jumped out early. Could have won the game outright in regulation. Lost because Badgley missed the kick and lost in overtime. Panthers have enough firepower here to do this. They faced a good defense last week against the Bears, which shut, kept their point total down. I think this week, they get bounced back. They're in this game as a shootout. I don't I need to be within a touchdown, which I can do. The hook is huge. Give me the Panthers getting seven and a half, pick three. Yeah, that, that hook is incredibly valuable. Uh, I really want to see what the Saints look like off the of bye. What in the world are we going to see with Michael Thomas coming back? He has already had one of the weirdest seasons you could imagine between the injury, avoids IR because he thinks he can come back the next week. He misses a bunch of weeks, then he's supposed to come back and fight his teammates. They're calling him Slant Boy. What happens when the guy who is supposed to be the best wide receiver in football finally gets back on the field? Yeah, it will be a fun question to track. So the picks for the week. Kevin's laying three with the Browns against the at home in Cincinnati against the Bengals. The Patriots laying two and a half at home against the 49ers. The Rams laying five and a half on Monday night at home against the Chicago Bears. I'm taking the Bills laying a whopping 13 and a half points against the hapless New York Jets. The Seahawks laying three and a half on the road in Arizona. And the Panthers, my third road team of the week, getting seven and a half on the road in New Orleans. Those are your picks for week number seven on the podcast. Next week, actually going to be joined by another sports grade guy. The great Alex Fasano will be here. Awesome. Yeah, love Faz. His, uh, his Steelers got my Eagles. That game was much closer than the nine-point cover. Pittsburgh put forward to Jeff. Um, but, yeah, look, Steelers got a big game. That'll be – you'll get uh, – it's a good call by you. You know what you're doing. Uh, off of the win uh, – or not win, I shouldn't say, but the game at Tennessee uh, with Baltimore on the schedule in front of them. Looks like a fun spot. Yeah, it's a good spot to get fast. I usually try and get him like later in the year, but this is like I had to get him earlier because this is a good prime Steelers spot. It might, so they might be the last undefeated team in the, in the AFC at that point. Yeah, it's going to be one of them, right, between them and the Titans. I, I like that Titans team. Uh, I'll tell you that. Um, it's a game with, with a lot of uh, attention on it, which sometimes can be difficult to bet. But if I, if I had to make a bet, I'll take the team that's catching points at home that's unbeaten instead of the team that's laying them. Yeah, that's for sure. Kevin, thanks for all the time. I really appreciate it. Before I let you, how can people follow you on social media and keep up with some of the stuff you're up to? Yeah, well, follow me over on Twitter at the Kevin Walsh. And then, of course, always go over to Sports Grid to catch everything we're doing 24 7 coverage, giving you guys the edge, the betting information that you need. I started off in the morning, 7 to 9 a.m., with my guy Dane Martinez on the early line. And I'm closing it out uh, from 9 to midnight on in game live, Monday through Thursday, also on the weekend. Look, on all the time. So you over to Sports Grid, hang out with us there, get the edge. 
Yeah, definitely get the edge. Definitely check out Kevin during those World Series games. There's some some props coming, being discussed there too. Oh, absolutely. The uh, the World Series, man. It's uh, it's it's a good matchup. I'm glad. I think Dodgers race uh, is a good one. Yeah. Did you know I actually picked that before the season? Dodgers race is my World Series pick. Yeah. No. Listen. I mean, I I can see the vision. Uh, Dodgers were the best team in baseball coming in, and uh, even Yankees fans. Uh, would would admit the Rays showed the best value in the futures market. They are uh, an incredibly well structured baseball team, and them being here is far from a surprise. Yeah, we'll see how that goes, Kevin. Thanks for all the time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you got it, Mike. Have a good one. You too. Up next, I'm going to do a little pop culture talk with Sam DeRosa right after this. <laughs> 